So talk about light because then there there's sunlight, there's blue light, and there's red light. And I mm -hmm. and I hear in the conversation of skincare, all three of those used differently. Yeah. So let's start with blue light. I'm on my computer a lot throughout the day. That blue light coming off my computer, is that damaging my skin? Significantly. And it doesn't only oh damage God. your skin. By the way, yes, it damages your skin. And all of the skin types which I would kind of maybe categorize you within that that little, you know, enclave are actually the most susceptible to that type of skin damage. Just the way that this wavelength res resonates with you with that pigment. So yeah. actually that doesn't only damage your skin and your collagen, it actually also damages the ability to synthesize collagen. And what I'm saying right now, it's not like we're going to literally have our skin melt off our face once we sit in of front course. of a computer. Yeah. But again, we're talking about increments here. Yes. And sitting in front of a computer, why is it so different from like having a blue light that is part of the makeup of the sun? It's because of two two reasons. Number one is the amount, the percentage of it. And the second is what we call HEV, which is high energy visible light. So these photons, which is particles of light, slam into your skin significantly uh, more powerfully than what they would in a natural circumstance. And that is really bad for your, for your skin. By the way, so some of the things that I said are very good to protect. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, was so. going to be my next question. So what do I do? So now I'm, I'm staying out of the sun thinking that's helping, but I'm sitting at the computer all day. So yeah. I can take those same supplements you talked about. Is there anything I can put on my skin or yes. a filter on my computer to block that, that bad blue light from damaging my skin? 100%. So first of all, in most electronics today, there is a there is there are things that you can do to the actual screen to have less blue light. Right. So if anyone has like an iPhone, there is a setting that allows you to completely like with three clicks on the side of your phone to have it completely red, completely red. Yeah. I've not, seen that. Not only night shift, which makes it slightly yellow, but like completely red. And for the most, most part of the day, that's the configuration my, my phone is at. Computer kind of the same thing. We can definitely buy a screen kind of a screen protector type thing. But there are a lot of things that you can do to the actual screen. Now, uh, to the actual like makeup of colors that come out of the screen. Mm. Having said that, we can definitely put things on our skin. For example, ectoin. For example, a really cool antioxidant that is called lipochromin 6. Again, a pretty expensive skincare ingredient. So aside from us... I haven't seen it yet in in skincare, but this is very similar to C60, if anyone knows C60. Mm -hmm. Although C60 actually makes you a little bit sensitive to the sun, this makes you less sensitive and also less sensitive to the, to the blue light. And again, ashwagandha, which sometimes in skincare, you'll see it's called winter cherry, is mm -hmm. also a really good ingredient to uh, protect against blue light. And you guys, I, I, you have a product called BioShield, I think. Is that what yeah. is that meant to block you, block the EMFs? Correct. Yeah. That actually the protects light, the blue light. We said, you know, again, like we're a biohacking skincare company, right? we right. uh, we claim that we're the most innovative skincare company in the world. So when we go and research a product, and again, I mentioned like we started using Actoin four years ago. It's already five years ago. It took us four years to develop our sunblock. Everything there would have a little bit of a peculiar way of, <laughs> of addressing. So anything from our, like the way we use zinc oxide is really special. Uh, we process it differently than anyone else, which makes it like doesn't leave that white little uh, powdery look, but it protects you like much better. We also have that ectoin there and we have lipochromin 6 and we also have a blend of like herbal, Chinese herbal extracts that allow us to protect better against EMF and pollution and heavy metals. But it's it's very, again, it's we call it a 360 degree environmental protection because, and I'm going to drop a bomb over here, you, if you're living in the Western world, you age about 80% of the skin aging isn't caused from what we call intrinsic aging, from the way you eat, from the way you, you your body ages mm. naturally. 
but it actually is caused by the environment. And within that 80%, more is driven by other things rather than UV. So the things that I mentioned, like glyphosates, um, yeah. pollution, again, artificial light, dust mites, all of these things together are together driving more of skin aging than uv so when we designed a sunlock we're saying okay that's great we could just make a product it's going to be great but it's going to be another product on the market or we're saying let's see what's really happening here what are we right. really protecting against a little bit harder to explain but the protection is much better and we are getting like a lot of people saying you know i've never had a sunblock like that or something like that because we're we address things a little bit different yeah, Different. oh, that's beautiful. Okay, talk about red light. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of red light masks. You know, I have a red light in the morning that I put on when I meditate or I turn on when I'm meditating. Is it true that these red light strategies can repair collagen? Well, they can definitely support the repair of collagen. Mm -hmm. They are not, that's, I'm, I'm going to risk losing like one person listening if they don't want me to get a little bit nerdy on it but I, I really want to explain something so first of all why do we react with red to red light anyway remember i told you before about the angle between the sun and earth yes. uh so basically the more atmosphere the 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 wavelengths of of light pass through the more they get absorbed in water so what we're left with are wavelengths that are not absorbed in water very well and because our body is made out of water mostly, they can actually travel through our body with ease, okay? Mm. And that's why we've, through the ages, we've evolved to interact with those wavelengths. They are predominantly like red and near infrared, which is different than far infrared that, that is used in saunas. Because that, mm. again, the way it warms us up is by interacting with, with water, with, by friction with water. So it actually isn't a very good therapeutic method, if you would. But red and near infrared, they are, our body, the mitochondria, evolved, so the powerhouse of the cell evolved to interact with them specifically, which is super cool. So only like this one enzyme in the mitochondria absorbs this light. The red and light. The red light and near infrared, yeah. which I like to say it's red that you cannot see. Don't think about it as infrared. Just think mm. of it as red that you can't see because they interact in a very similar fashion. But the way they in interact is through stimulation, which means that mm. there is like a lower threshold and an upper threshold. So a lot of the things like these masks, I'm not saying they're not good in general. You're just working. It's like working with very lightweight in the gym. Mm. Mm, yeah. And... A lot of the things that we think of as like the most powerful ever, blah, 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 there really is no need for that amount of power. The, the, the ability to stimulate the mitochondria is pretty sub substantiated. So 99.9% of, of the panels, such as the one that you mentioned, will work and they'll work very well. It's a little bit challenging for an industry that tries to differentiate itself. I'll, I'll, give, it, I'll give the industry that. But for the most part, any panel that you're going to get works very well. Now, I said that it supports collagen right. production. And the reason is, is because right. my body, your body, anyone's body doesn't know a wrinkle is a problem. It doesn't know a pigmented mm -hmm. area is a problem. It doesn't know mm -hmm. a lax, you know, lax skin is a problem. That is because there is no direct inflammation that is created there. It is more as a, 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 you can think of uh, the way that the earth doesn't know a, a mountain or a valley is a problem, mm. right? It's just there and it's now we work around it mm. uh, for the most part, okay? We can improve hydration, etc. We can look better, but the wrinkle itself, that divot in collagen, isn't something that the body has on its agenda to repair. So even yeah. if we support the powerhouse of the cell, even we, if we support more energy, more ability to repair, we have to have something else that stimulates the repair of that wrinkle. Alone, it will be very minimal. The effect would be very minimal because we haven't done anything to signal, to communicate to the body. And that's kind of going back to kind of the first thing we ever said in this conversation, which is like, oh, we have to communicate in a different way with our body mm -hmm. once we've passed, you know, 40 when we're once we're flirting with perimenopause and obviously after you know when, once right. we're in menopause right 
What about sweating? So you, you brought up infrared. And what I've noticed is that there's two things where I can really, biohacks, that I can really see a difference in my skin. One is an infrared sauna, and the other one is actually a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And I've done a lot of research on hyperbaric, but it seems like when I do both those biohacks on a regular basis, I, my skin definitely has a different look to it. So is it talk a little bit about the importance of sweating and not everybody has an infrared. So is it maybe they just, we need to sweat more often. And then what, what do we know? I know you guys have a hyperbaric mask, which is really cool, but what do we know about needing oxygen on the skin? Well, so we need oxygen in order for our skin to have, it's kind of relating to the last thing we said, which is the skin needs energy in order to repair. But I'll go, that's just to answer your question, but I'll go back to sweating. And one of the things that the skin is working against is obviously toxins and the inability to alleviate toxic load. So one, what you're seeing basic, basically is a more refreshed skin. And another thing that is called yeah. skin autofluorescence, which means how how much kind of infrared you're emitting and which which yeah. our eye receives as as a glowing beautiful skin which is different than shiny again not there is actually no relation between the two but that vitality that kind of jumps at you okay now another thing that infrared is really good at is hsp so heat shock proteins and these proteins which happens also by the way when we're in a cold plunge uh, they're actually the same proteins but the uh, heat shock proteins what they do is they go back and they look at basically proteins that weren't built well and they can kind of use those proteins and build them rebuild them it's like you have a kid that built a lego castle like kind of weird and now there's no door and no window and it you know it doesn't do what the lego castle is supposed to do or whatever or you know, and you kind of go back and you fix a few things and now, oh, it looks like the, what, what the Lego intended, right? So this is what heat shock proteins can do. So that's something very interesting. But again, we are missing a piece, which is kind of the rejuvenation piece, if you would, that signal for repair. Hyperbaric is a little bit different because a lot of the signals are not necessarily from that oxygen, but from the Hyperoxic, uh, hyperoxic, hypoxic effect, or that the effect of us having a lot of oxygen, loading our, mm. our cells with oxygen and, and allowing a lot of energy to be created, and then tricking the body to think that it doesn't have a lot because we're getting out of this, the mm. hyperbaric chamber. It's like a or, hormetic stress. 100%. We can see it across the board. A lot of the, a lot of the pathways that we're interested in when we talk about hormesis, whether it is like sirtuins, T TNF, uh, I mean, a, a lot of them, any type of like detoxification pathways, they are all being activated by this hyperoxic hypoxic paradox, which we call basically when we're when we're getting in, that in shift.